Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I want to take you behind the scenes a little bit and talk about an element of my reviewing process that maybe I, I don't discuss very often, and that's the process of waiting for review, the process of getting ready to actually write and film my eventual review. One of the most common criticisms that people lob against my channel, and one that is certainly grounded in a truth, is, you know, oh, he doesn't spend enough time with the gear. You know, people will say on forums, oh, he just takes it out of the box, films a video ten minutes later, and sends it along. Like... No, that's not actually what happens. Um, as I've mentioned before, usually what happens when I get something is it I, I get it on my table, I take it apart, if it's a, a, something that I can take apart, uh, do all the maintenance on it to get it on a you know even footing with everything else, and then I'll carry it. And sometimes I'll carry it for a day or two, sometimes I'll carry it for a week or two. Sometimes I've even carried things much longer than that before I felt comfortable. But usually there will be some period of carry. And I do wish, 100%, I mean, every time they say, he needs to use it for six months before he can say a damn thing. You know, honestly, yeah, that would be nice. If I had the time, if I had, you know, a million parallel lives such that I could carry everything that, it, that comes across my table for a long period of time, that would probably be great. I, and there were definitely, there have been pieces of gear where it's just like, wow, I really wish I could just keep doing this and doing this. And, and usually those are the things that end up in my, uh, my collection, so to speak. And those are the things that you'll find come into my collection for maybe six months, for a year, and then drift away after I feel like I'm really, I, I've had what I needed from it, so to speak. But anyways, I, so I do wish I could carry everything for a long term, but there's always that question for me, which is, when am I done? right? When am I ready to do the film? In some cases, that's very quick. And in some cases, it's artificially quick. For instance, um, when my buddies Louis Jewell is over uh, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, sorry. Um, anyways, um, when they'll send me something along to take a look at, usually it's a very expensive watch. And A, I don't want to have possession of that expensive watch any longer than I need to, because I don't want to pay for it if something happens. And B, um, it's factory fresh, so I can't really take it out about wear it and whatnot. So what I'm doing there, and I'm very upfront about this, is these are my first impressions. These are what, you know, this is a piece of gear that I've spent some time with, but, uh, you know, it, it's not something that, it is very different. Um, sometimes, you know, I can be very quick about something, even though I, I don't need to be necessarily. There have definitely been pieces of gear where they're relatively straightforward. It's maybe a very simple piece of gear, like a, a pocket knife that doesn't have a whole lot going on, but it's absolutely good to go. In those cases, I may only need a day of carry before I feel like, you know what, sure, I could carry it again, but that would feel a little bit redundant. This feels so much like so many other things, etc. Um, sometimes th there are things where I end up carrying them, and I carry them a little longer than I need to just because I'm enjoying them. This is actually an example of that. This is the um, Doug Ritter, uh, Ritter uh, RSK Mach 1 G2. Um, this is a knife that I, at some level, it's very simple, and at some level, I've reviewed an earlier iteration of it. I reviewed the Benchmade version, but... Um, this is one that I ended up throwing in the pocket a little bit more than I needed to do just because, you know, I felt like I knew what was going on, but I, I enjoyed carrying it, so I, you know, kept carrying it a little bit there. Um, sometimes things take longer, and sometimes things take longer than they expected. And actually, um, both of these guys here on the side are uh, cases of that right now. Here I sit on a, a Saturday morning, and I actually have nothing I need to film a review of right now. I mean, sure, there were things I could probably, you know, scare something up of. Um, but I sat down ready to write these two guys up. But as I was writing up the review, and indeed I've got like three quarters of a review of this guy and half of one for this, I found my feelings changing. I found my feelings conflicted. You know, with the Shirogorov here, I mean, and I'll, I'll get into this in the review fully. It's a really, really nice knife. At some level, it's amazing. But at another level, it's also, oh, it's really overpriced. And so trying to figure out exactly where I land on this, right now, I haven't landed anywhere yet. I kept vacillating between this is amazing and this is terrible, and I don't know where I've landed, so this needs more pocket time. No matter how much I want to write the review, if I were to write that review right now, it wouldn't be a good one. I don't think it would fully capture what I'm thinking because I don't quite know yet what I'm thinking. Similarly, this guy is actually in a different approach. This is the Greg Stevens Designs. Uh, let's see here. It says in the back here, uh, GSD-4M. Very, very attractive watch. Very interesting watch one that I've been wearing a great deal. Um, but the reason I'm, I'm having trouble writing this one up is because, actually, I feel too good about it. Um, I'm liking the watch a great deal. I think it's really awesome. But the question here is, am I on the honeymoon period? Um, because it is so far outside of my normal range. It doesn't have a date. It doesn't even hack. It's a hand-winding watch. There's so much weirdness for this for me. Uh, and so my question is, like, am I just am I just under its spell here? And so I, this one was another one where I felt like, you know what? I like it a lot, but 
I don't trust myself yet, so I need to take some more time. Whereas, like I said, and so both of these guys are in that awkward state right now where it's like, I probably could write a review here, and I bet I would probably agree with myself mostly, but I'm just not ready yet. And so both of these guys are going to go back on the wrist and back in the pocket. Both of these guys need more time. That's not a demerit on them necessarily. That's just a sign that I am a little bit conflicted. I'm a little bit like, I have no idea what I'm doing here. And so I need to hold on to it until I do have more of an idea. But of course, like I said, there are ones that are relatively straightforward. This is a contrast here. This little Timex guy, this is the Timex uh, Q series, something or another. Um, it's an interesting little piece, but it's not a piece that, I, that I'm finding terribly complicated. Um, this one I should be able to review pretty quickly, and that's uh, that's kind of a beautiful thing. Um, the, then, But one of the big questions is, well, okay, hold on. If you needed more time for these why don't you just take more time for everything? That's a really good question. I mean, one of the big things is, like I said, you can't run a channel and post new content three times a week if you're planning to take six months to review everything. But more importantly, um, you know, thinking about some of the stuff that I've had on the channel for a long time, you know, stuff where I did an early review after a week or something like that, or after uh, after I felt, you know, ready, and then stuff that I, and then I did a follow-up review maybe a year later or something like that. Um, For me, that was actually a very different experience. Um, That was actually... Because there I, I took the time. I took as much time as I possibly needed. And in those events, I've actually found that my opinion didn't change much. There have been some cases where some things have changed a, a little bit in my head. Sorry, I'm running off here, but I wanted to grab this guy. For instance, in my initial review of this guy here, this is the Omega Seamaster Pro 300. Um, this guy, I really didn't care for the uh, skeletonized hands in my quick review. Um, as I've carried this guy more, and this has spent a lot of time on my wrist, they haven't bothered me nearly as much. I've gotten to the point where I read them very straightforwardly, and it doesn't really bug me. Would I maybe prefer filled hands? Maybe, I guess. But it's been something that bugged me a lot more on day one than it has on day six months freaking later. But for the most part, when I've taken more time, although I, certainly it can result in a slightly more precise review, and I have a better sense of exactly how much something bugs me, well, I haven't found that it's made a huge difference there. And so, ultimately, I kind of wind up trusting my own intuition. As a scientist, I don't love this. I, I wish that there was some, you know, very dedicated characteristic, you know, like I wake up each morning and rate my opinion of it, and when that's, when the standard deviation of the rating on a 10-point scale goes under, you know, a total of one, uh, or I'm sorry, under 0.5, then, I, then I'm ready to review it. I don't freaking know. Um, but at the same time, that, that intuition has served me well. But it's also very frustrating. <laughs> right now, I would love to be writing these two guys up. Um, but unfortunately, like I said, I just sat down and after a certain point, it was just like, damn it. No. All right, back in the pocket. And at some level, look, I'm a really lucky guy. The fact that I can say, oh, $715 Shirogorov knife, that is probably a grail for a number of people. Like, oh, back in the pocket. Woe is me. I am the biggest freaking jackass ever. I totally understand that. These are the very best problems that a person can have. Well, maybe not. Like, what do I do with all this money uh, that is mine legally? Like, oh, holy cow. I, 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 I've exceeded the FDIC limit at this institution. Better find another one. That's a good problem. To, anyways, I digress. Um, it's a very good problem for me to have, but it is absolutely a, a weird little sort of problem. It's something that I've gotten a little bit better at over the course of the channel, of knowing when I'm ready to actually do the film, when I'm ready to uh, hold, or when I need to spend a little bit more time all of those things have felt better. And I think that by and large, it's worked out well. But anyways, there you go. This is a little bit of behind the scenes thing. Hope you found it interesting nonetheless and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.